Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, sports fans of all ages, welcome back to a very special session of uh, Preston Can't Play. That's the name of the show we do. <laughs> I almost introduced us as Super Beard Bros, which we aren't. Those, those <laughs> no, guys. We're not those guys. <laughs> those are different guys. But there's a very, very special birthday boy in the house tonight. That's right. It's Preston's very special little day. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Also, beard, I gave it to you. Super Beard Bros, if you want to hang out. Yeah. <laughs> Hit us up yeah. if you're ever in Seattle and you want to do this jump gooder than I am. Fucking God. <sighs> Are you kidding me? What am I doing on this show? What is anything? Um, yeah, happy birthday. Thank you. you. Many years ago today, mm, you so many. were born. You, you, you got... You joined us. Yep, it happened. Finally, at long last. <laughs> oh. So, Whoa! Uh, I didn't know they were gonna puke about it. That's uh, remarkably unchill. I think I might die. No. You'll be fine. Whoa, swoopy friend. You've got your, you've got your reserve tanks too. Ah, I do. Yeah, we're in the wrecked ship here. On the last episode, which wrecked him. Was a little bit a while ago. Damn near uh, killed him. Ton beat up Fantoon. Pretty choicely. And we, yeah. Pretty decisively. Did I, I do it in one? I would say you did do it in one. Wow. Um, After I was like tripping about that fight <laughs> quite a while. What the fuck? Well, it's very intimidating. He's spooky. Yeah. He, he seems like he's gonna like, just come Ghost at pirate, you. right? Then, yeah, yeah, but... But then like... You can settle into a pattern pretty easily. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't... As long as you're like not terrible at the game. Well, we discovered something weird about this cartridge that we're playing when Ton... For some reason, this only seems to happen in this area, but when Ton uses the x-ray scope, it, like, throws off the colors. The background gets all fucked up. Yeah, I don't know. Straight up fucked. I've never seen that before. But I've yeah. commented on some other uh, color issues that this game seems to have, or this con this cartridge specifically seems to mm -hmm. have. Um, but that's... Sorry, it's not perfect. That's, like, the biggest one. I tried to be perfect for you, and I couldn't. Hmm. Well, uh, oh yeah, we couldn't figure out how to get this one right. Yeah, you were working on it. Oh. Ton played, continued to play this game for a, about a half an hour after we finished <laughs> recording, and just didn't save it. Just, just having a good time. Just, yeah, just exploring, enjoying playing the game. <laughs> it's hard when we play games I enjoy, which is definitely going to be tricky now that we're playing Bayonetta, because that they do auto save on that one. Oh, so you? Oh yeah, so you really have to be careful. Yeah, I have to be. I must behave. Oh, behave. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the only wrestling recap show inside <laughs> of a Let's Play. That's right. We're talking about the new hotness. Well, I didn't. Did you watch TLC? Yeah. That's, I didn't. And then I decided I wasn't going to because... I don't know. I probably had a reason at some point. Okay. But I did watch Raw, uh -huh. where we now know that Baron Corbin was bested by the strongman Braun Strowman. Yeah. Uh, someone is either breaking into here to murder us, or it's, it's the ghost. It's Why the can't ghost. it be both? It's always just one or the other with you. It says Joyous Wolf. It's that band that my friend is in that I went to see a few weeks ago. Oh my god, it is. <laughs> oh, I feel dumb. <laughs> you were disappeared for a second there. Whoa! Aww. That's okay. I had a sandwich earlier. And I went earlier and I forgot that Tom was going to be. Not like forgot Tom was going to be. Right, but. Yeah. Mm. It was a different time. Sure was. <laughs> different time, different place. Sorry. That's fine. I mean, crush it. the ghost brought me some mighty o donuts. Mighty o. Very excited about. Thank you. I'm excited for you. I love you. Is that okay? Birthday. Mm -hmm. Um, I forgot if you asked me to pick you up one mate or two, so I got two. One of each flavor that you requested. Hell's yeah. I did. This guy. Um. Hmm? Oh, is it sample day? Nice. 
I'm sorry that I have a cable. Extra samples? Wow, that's a lot. That's great. Um, have a slow burn here. Uh, I'm sorry, Tan, you were talking about uh, wrestling. Mm -hmm. Did you ask me a question or? Well, I'd ask if you watch we... TLC. Yep. And then I mentioned that Baron Corbin had been bested, uh -huh. and I was curious how you how you felt about oh. that and the direction that you might think they they're going to go now. I think it's very interesting um, because they 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 kind of telegraphed that they were going to do like a narrative reset uh -huh. um, because they had built up so much that Baron Corbin's position as the general manager was up for debate was oh, okay. being contested during at, at TLC and but that ahead of it was taking too long I'm ahead of the sure. event they announced that Vince McMahon was going to be present on Raw okay so you know it's pretty clear like that obviously like Baron Corbin is going to lose and or and Vince McMahon is going to show up to do the next thing, like okay. to announce what Take a happen job back. what happens next. Um, so let's do one thing at a time. Okay. I was um, I I liked the segment uh, that oh, the Baron Corman segment at TLC mm -hmm. for what it was, but I was <clears throat> very disappointed because I was hoping very hard that it would also be the return of Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Because he had subbed in for injured Braun Strowman at in a dark match. Oh, oh yeah, you mentioned that. At Starcade. Um, so I thought they would do that. Um, and that didn't happen. Bray Wyatt did not return. However, I have it on good authority that he'll be back very soon. How do you know? Um, he has... Um, they filmed... Uh... Uh, this week's shows, mm -hmm. um, they pre-taped them, so they're not doing Raw and SmackDown Live oh. this coming week, so that the wrestlers can have, have a Christmas. holiday. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it was reported by PW Insider, <clears throat> um, that he that Bray Wyatt w w was present. Oh shit. Um, what is it's your boy? What is not? Um, clear is if the matches that he were that he was involved with or the match that he was involved with were dark or not. What's dark mean? Dark means untelevised. Okay. <clears throat> so, but he's a, at least he's back and he's working dark matches now, which means hey, yo, you got, you did a thing. I got the pink one. This is so good. Which I'm means so only, about it's this. only a matter of time before he shows up. On television, no, I um, didn't want this. Traditionally, for television, what they would do is like, if if they have like someone who is who has been on hiatus, um, or like is coming back from injury, mm -hmm. or like doing a character reset or something, any anything like that, um, bef before they are like canon back on television, yeah, they are. They work dark matches. Gotcha. That's the sort of the norm. That's pretty typical, yeah. Um, unless they're doing like a huge, huge reveal. Okay. Um, that they want to keep it completely separate for because they know that people will like post about it on social media. Okay. So obviously, like, they're not too concerned with people knowing that Bray is coming back soon. Mm hmm. Um, because everyone's been pretty much predicting it. Um, but they're probably if I'm if I was to guess they're probably not doing anything if he is doing dark matches that would <laughs> have anything to do with any kind of new character okay. or anything like that which isn't which is another thing that's not entirely confirmed his Twitter which has been very, very cryptic over the past few months um, seems to imply that he's got some kind of character reset happening okay why is um, that because it's been cryptic? Yeah, just the way that he's talking about, like, have, like, the language is very indicative of, like, having new purpose mm -hmm. and, like, 
you know, sort of the like new re- Daniel re- Bryan reestablishing like his intentions and stuff like that. It's not just like I'm coming back and I'm taking what's mine kind of stuff. Oh, okay. It's like, Which is how it normally. Yeah. Go. For months he was. <clears throat> for months, he was posting on Twitter. Um. And the, and it was it was kind of ambiguous and cryptic, but the general like concepts seemed to be that he had been institutionalized. Okay. And that the doctor that was overseeing him was tweeting on his Twitter about what was happening in the institution. Okay. And then he deleted his entire Twitter feed like a couple weeks ago. Mm. And since then is it, it's like I know now what I must do and kind of stuff like that. Um so it's Crypt very edgelord shit. Y- yeah, super, but like that's I mean that's all I want from Bray Wyatt. <laughs> for him to be a cryptic edgelord. So that's exciting. Um anyway, that's a tangent. But I enjoyed the segment. Did you have you seen anything about it? I know they kinda like did a quick recap of it on Raw, but like do you have like a, an idea of what I watched happened? Raw but I didn't watch SmackDown, so I I know some details. I hear other people showed up. Basically, everyone else who Baron Corbin's been targeting showed up. Yeah, um, and they wouldn't have really talked about that on SmackDown, and they didn't. They I mean they right. mentioned it like any other it's, stuff. It's relevant to what's happening on SmackDown, also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically, what happened was he was convinced Baron Corbin was convinced that because Bronstrom was injured, that he wouldn't be able to take part in the match. So he was he came out, and then he was telling the ref. Oh, to, I, I have watched the past like three, three or four weeks worth though. To do the uh, to do the countdown. Mm-hmm. For Braun Strowman to officially be counted out and Baron Corbin to have won the match via forfeit. And they started the countdown, but then Braun Strowman came out <gasps> and with his arm in a sling. And. Because he's like actually hurt, right? He's, yeah, he's actually <clears throat> hurt. Um, <gasps> and he wasn't on Raw. So he's still like off TV effectively. But he came back mm-hmm. for this segment. Um. And so I don't know how long that recovery period is going to be. He could be very well be back ne- next week. Um, uh, so Brosnan pointed out that because they were doing a TLC match, it is by nature a no disqualification match. Okay. So then Apollo Cruz and Finn Balor and um, uh, Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. Which I like their... I like them more than I thought I was going to. Uh, Bobby Roode and... Gable and Roode, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Gable just kind of adopted uh, Bobby Roode's gimmick, but it it's fun anyway. Yeah. I haven't um, seen a lot of them. Just They come out and are super hype. Yeah. I think Bobby Roode debuted on the main roster and like got a, a lot of attention like right before you started paying attention. And mm. then like... They kind of ran out of ideas. <laughs> ran out of Bobby Roode stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, he's he's been underutilized ever since. Um, so, yeah, and then Heath Slater was the referee. Oh, that's right, yeah. So they all just, like, beat up on Baron Corbin. And, so and then Braun Strowman just, like, put his foot up on him and Heath Slater countered him up. So Braun Strowman ran the match without having to actually compete in the match. Yo, I loved the Baron Corbin fight on Raw, where they basically just... I thought I would do, like, tacos. The, uh... I hate how long I'm stuck on this thing. Um, oh, the Baron Corbin fight, where basically all the shit he'd been pulling, they oh, had yeah. other people pull it on him. Yeah, yeah. And that was pretty choice. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good back end to that whole saga. Yeah. Um, as far as the reset goes, I think I don't really have an opinion on it so far. It's it sort of remains to be seen how the it's going to happen. Glass coffins. Yeah. Glass totally. coffins are also remains to be seen. Right. I, was, I had to catch everyone else up. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm here for not just like switching in another GM. Yeah. Like just doing the same kind of stuff. Um, I don't know if I love 
just having like all four of the, like the big McMahons just yeah. in charge of both shows. It's kind of interesting, but I guess we'll see how it goes. I don't. What I don't like is that as a result of all this, that God damn it, that I this shit was gonna happen. God, damn Paige it. was removed as general manager of SmackDown. Which it was? Yeah. So she's just kind of like collateral damage because they just decided like, all right, well, we're just not going to do general managers. Hmm. But she it's can't. Whack. But she can't wrestle, so I don't know what like Paige her. is going <laughs> to do. Yeah. Um. So I'm a little bit peeved about that Paige, but I guess I'm going to reserve any like strong feelings until I find out what they're going to do. And uh, my assumption and which echoes some stuff I've seen on the internet is that because of the holiday season they're probably not going to really like hard pull the trigger on any big changes until okay. into January um guess that makes sense yeah so alright well we can uh, I guess we can continue talking about this on the next one if you like um but uh, hey I've been Preston Black I continue to be Tom Mitchell hey. we never said our names this one. Oh, hey that's who we are. Inc yeah. <laughs> Anyone who this just is showed your, up for this, this is one. your first time pressing black time machine. Uh, hey, goodbye. Hope Everyone. it's not your last time. Yeah, please come back. Please come back. I miss you. We're still here. We we don't go anywhere. <laughs> we just stay here waiting for you guys to come back on the next one. I love you.